Hi, I'm Earl Nauman. I'm a professor of marketing at the American University of Sharjah in the United Arab Emirates. Paul Williams and I recently had an article published in Journal Services Marketing that built on some research that we've conducted over the last several years. This data actually flowed from the, a time whenever I established and ran a research firm for about 11 years prior to getting back into academics. Um, my clients tended to be medium to large size firms, uh, up to Fortune 100 firms, and we would do longitudinal studies with these firms. We had to present to the senior execs in organizations to get them to realize that there's millions of dollars to be made by increasing loyalty by one or two or three percentage points. So that focus was our initial focus on in linking customers to financial performance in organizations. In 2005, Ruth Bolton was editor of Journal of Marketing, and she solicited articles from some of the leading scholars in the field, such as Steve Brown, Fred Webster, Don Lehman, and others, asking them what they saw as the future of marketing. What were the shortcomings and what did we need to do different? The consensus of those articles in that 2005 issue with JM was that we in marketing needed to be more uh, managerially oriented. We needed to show the benefits of marketing actions and decisions on the financial performance in the firm. Specifically, we needed to be able to document the financial performance metrics relating to from increases in customer sat or changes in products or service delivery uh, and tie that back to the financial performance of the firm in general. So what Ruth came up with and the, the scholars came up with in 2005 was exactly what we've been trying to do for the previous several years. After that, I got back into academics and decided to start using some of these longitudinal databases for academic research. So at that point, Paul Williams and I started analyzing the data to see what happens to changes over time in customer attitudes and how that's linked to financial performance. We felt this is a significant improvement over most studies that are done in the field because most studies are cross-sectional. They'll survey 300, 500, 1,000 people at a point in time but it doesn't show the dynamic of how attitudes change over time and how that's related to financial performance. So what Paul and I started doing was going back and looking at some of these financial performance metrics. The, the variables we looked at were revenue growth, uh, earnings per share, um, ROI, our, uh, return on assets, uh, Tobin's Q, and a variety of other financial metrics. So what we were trying to do is take these databases of customer attitudes, specifically customer satisfaction, and repurchase intentions and track them over a period of three, four, five years so we could get better insight to how changes in attitudes led to changes in financial performance at the firm. So with that, I'd like to turn the presentation over to Paul and he can talk to you about some of the specific financial metrics that we uh, use and the results that we came up with. Okay, thank you, Will. Um, for this particular study, we were dealing with the building services industry where we are talking about um, heating, ventilation and air conditioning systems. Not the most exciting research area, but one that uh, we found particularly relevant and we're dealing with large contract sizes, so uh, financially it was interesting as well. There were um, three main results that we found from the data. The, the first one that was actually a very strong relationship between customer satisfaction and actual retention with the firm. There was a higher renewal rate wherever the higher satisfaction levels were. Again, mo most theories suggest that that's going to be the case, but now we've got 19 quarters of data that proved it. The second interesting result was that there was, for revenue growth particularly, there was a very strong relationship between customer satisfaction and revenue growth. Again, what we're alluding to is that the higher levels of satisfaction led to higher levels of revenue growth with respective customers. And the third interesting statistic that we found in our data was the customer satisfaction is highly correlated with some market performance as represented by the stock price and we also reconfirmed that with Tobin's Q. There was an exceptionally high correlation between the market performance of the firm as represented by stock prices and whether customers were satisfied. In conclusion, um, I think we've, we've shown in longitudinal data has been extremely insightful, it's interesting and we have confirmed an awful lot of theory that's already been been shown in concessional studies and we think it's uh, added value to, to you as an audience. Thank you for listening.